You're listening to the What's Happening Podcast with Gary Watts. Good morning. I'm here with Ryan Heyer, the City Administrator of North Liberty. And we're here to talk about North Liberty. So good morning, Ryan. Well, good morning. Thanks for having me. How are you? Pretty good. So to start out, maybe if you wouldn't mind, tell us a little bit about uh, your journey on being a city manager, what interested you about being in that type of profession, maybe a little bit about your family and how you got to the point where you got to North Liberty, if you don't mind. Sure. Well, uh, some people know this, but my dad was a city manager uh, for 30 years approximately and worked in various levels of local government for 45 years. So most of my childhood, or all of my childhood, uh, he was a city manager in either Bellevue, Iowa or Manchester, Iowa. And so I knew going into college that I wanted nothing to do with local government. Uh <laughs> After being around your dad or That's listening right. to his stories. Yeah, and... getting the phone calls at home. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, back then uh, there was no email or, or right. uh, social media. It was either a phone call or someone showing up at your door. At your door. Right. How come yeah. the streets aren't plowed? Where's my garbage? You didn't pick it up. That's stuff right. Like. Yeah, the, the darndest things. Fun you know? stuff. And, uh, and then, um, frankly, I, I kind of um, – just piddled around in college, not knowing what I wanted to do until my junior year, and then realized, well, maybe, maybe this city management field isn't all bad. And, and actually, it turned out uh, to be not only good for a career, but uh, brought my dad and I a lot closer. Uh, we good. we had the typical, uh, not maybe that typical, but uh, in in high school, we uh, didn't all, when I was in high school, we didn't always see eye to eye. And so yeah. it took me a few years after that to realize he's a pretty smart guy. And, uh, and so from there, uh, took some classes at, at you and I got my public administration degree and then, uh, jumped right into local government with the city of El Cater. Uh, I was their first city administrator. Uh, and I was 22 at the time. So pretty young, uh, and green, uh, but could rely a lot on my dad, who was just 30 miles south at the time in Manchester. Uh, so a lot of phone calls uh, and uh, questions and uh, just advice from him. And uh, and then from there, uh, Stephanie and I and our, at the time, one-year-old son moved over to Eagle Grove. Uh, and we were there for uh, just over six years. And then in 2007, uh, we made the move here. And at that time, Ellie uh, uh, was one. Uh, she's our, our youngest, and um, we uh, we moved to, to North Liberty, and we've been here now for just over 15 years. So uh, Stephanie and I have been uh, married uh, for 23 years now, or just over, just under 23 years. We have Tanner, who's 22 now, and Ellie is 17, a junior at Liberty High, and, and part of that Liberty High uh, volleyball state championship really? team. So congratulations. Yeah, pretty excited about that. <laughs> Isn't that a great school to see that develop? And yeah, that it's, area. it's a great area and the school has been fantastic. The, the uh, teachers and administration out there, uh, I think are great. I know Ellie really is enjoying uh, her experience there. When I first saw the colors, I thought, you know, purple and whatnot, but it's really grown on me. It looks great now. Initially I thought the lightning or is it the bolts? It's the bolt. The yeah, bolt. well, the lightning or the bolts. They right. go with, yeah. Anyway, it's growing on me, and I like it now. But initially, I go, oh, I don't know about purple. <laughs> yeah, good. yeah. The I I have a lot of purple in my drawer now. Yeah, I bet. Uh, I bet. Uh, and, and actually, those colors are really close to our wedding colors. So Stephanie's right. a big fan. Good. Uh, good. Them. What, what, uh, your daughter play college volleyball or? No, she won't. She, um, she's enjoyed her, uh, volleyball career and she's still going on she'll be a senior of course and and does a lot of club ball but uh she is uh she's gonna she wants to pursue other opportunities i don't right. know what those are yet i don't know if she knows what those are yet right. but right i still don't know what i want to do either so well, it's okay that they can, take a little time i can see you're dabbling in a number of things <laughs> yeah. so. so anyway when i when i you know we're here to talk about north liberty also and i appreciate your story there and where, how you got to north liberty how did you end up did you uh, have a search committee, or were they a headhunter or when you got in 2007? Yes, yeah, so they um, they uh, had a committee here uh, comprised of, of North Liberty residents, business owners, city council, and staff. And uh, we knew uh, when we were in Eagle Grove, we really enjoyed our time in Eagle Grove. In fact, we still have uh, 
uh, some of our best friends are there. Uh, but we knew that we wanted to get back over into eastern Iowa. Um, Steph is a, a nurse, and so she uh, knew there'd be opportunity over here. And and uh, just from a career trajectory perspective, it made a lot of sense. And so North Liberty was um, just a, a great opportunity for us. And uh, we're hoping, I'm hoping to finish out my career here. Uh, we just really enjoy uh, the area. Well, you know, Iowa's got... Uh, you know, it's it's a great place to live and, and grow your family and a workplace. And But just think of Johnson County and what goes on around in this area. I think it's the best area of the state, and the growth has been tremendous. So today we're also going to talk a lot about what's going on in North Liberty. So I remember I've been around, I don't know, since 75, 76 here, so a few years, 45 years or so in the real estate business. Um uh, the growth that I've seen in North Liberty up in that area, Coralville, North Liberty, Johnson County has just been phenomenal. I remember when I first started in real estate, we didn't go to North Liberty very much. We didn't think much of North Liberty as far as a real estate place or, or involvement in real estate. So, And what's gone on since, uh, you know, probably since you've come in since seven, you know, look at 15, 16 years, it's just been amazing. When I look, and I know we're going to highlight a lot of the projects when I look at 965 and I look at all the roundabouts and the development, um, the, the new school. We just talked about Liberty High School. There's just so many things that are going on in North Liberty. So let's start, maybe uh, talk about uh, a few of the things that you had uh, that you would like to mention here about what is happening in North Liberty. Yeah. Well, sure. Well, I, uh, I couldn't agree more with those comments and you know, I have a lot of colleagues across the state who are uh, struggling right now with the fact that there is no growth or limited right. growth. And so we're, you know, Johnson County is special. And of course, the University of Iowa is a, a big uh, yeah. contributor to that. And, you know, North Liberty is just positioned so well between uh, Cedar Rapids and, and Iowa City. And, uh, and so I think that's been a, a real driving uh, factor to our growth. And then we try to supplement that location with uh, quality of life type of projects and, and uh, investments into the community to get people to, to live there and, and to attract uh, those businesses that uh, have come. And so it's been fun to see, you know, 2007, uh, we, had, it, we were uh, certainly a bedroom community, and some would probably argue we still are, but uh, we're seeing a lot more of those commercial services, commercial businesses located in North Liberty. Uh, so that's that's fun. Um, one of the the projects that we're excited about that's coming up is uh, in Solomon's Landing, which is just north of uh, Penn Street, would be west of Jones Boulevard. And Brandon Pratt and his development group have a, an exciting project there with a bowling alley, mm. uh, fun center, and a, uh, connected to, of course, a pizza ranch, which uh, Brandon has multiple locations. And and then also a, a sports board, a sports court complex, indoor sports court, and um, traveling uh, for volleyball uh, or other events. Uh, certainly, those uh, those um, facilities are uh, in high demand and really drive a lot of economic activity to a community. So, we're uh, we're excited to see that project move forward. I think bowling would be great. Hopefully, you have pickleball too, right? You know, sports courts. Yeah, they. I tell you, I always tell folks you never want to get on the wrong side of the pickleball organization. Uh, oh, and there was another one I can't remember, but those those pickleballers take it serious, right. and uh, uh, and I appreciate that. And so we we actually have a really nice outdoor facility, and then of course, in our uh, current recreation center, we we have a, uh, a number of courts, and uh, this new facility will, will also have some pickleball courts. Right. So. I know I was in Florida last year, and it seemed like at 6 a.m. they're packed, and they're packed at night, and they got lights on, and you can't get a court. I think it's got to be a week in advance minimum to get a pickleball court. And it's like it's like a uh, it's the thing to do. Yeah, our our <laughs> parks director was telling me that sometimes he has to uh, monitor how long folks are there because they they get one hour. Right. Uh, and the argument's been it's one hour from when the next person arrives not one hour total and so right. people uh they get a little fussy when they have to wait for their court so. another really neat attraction about north liberty is the, the rec center what a fabulous facility with you can walk around the track upstairs basketball courts uh, the pool is very nice they swim in it quite a bit 
Uh, what a great place, the rec center. And I think, what was that, about 20 years ago that came into town? It's actually nearing 30 years old. 30 years. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. I can't believe it. An outdoor pool is fabulous in the summer. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it sees a lot of activity. The whole facility does. And we've um, we've tried to um, you know keep up on that. It's a facility that requires a lot of maintenance and upkeep. And so over the last couple of years, we've had to invest over a million dollars in the facility for the pool heaters and the HVAC right. systems just to uh, keep them, uh, you know, up and running. And we're actually putting a new roof on now. And I, I couldn't believe the cost of a, a new <laughs> roof. It's uh, approaching a million dollars. So yeah. it's, it's uh, everything's went up. Yeah. So tell us about uh, population growth in the last 10, 15, 20 years, five years, however you look at that in North Liberty. Sure. So when we came in 2007, we were just over 8,000 people. And the last census, 2020, had us at about 20,000. 500, uh, wow. roughly. Uh, and frankly, we think that number is a little low. Uh, I think if you asked uh, my colleagues, Jeff or Kelly in, in uh, Iowa City and Coralville, they would, they would also say that their counts are probably a little low. The census was going on during COVID. Um, uh, so it, uh, we, we just think the counts weren't as accurate as they have been in the past. Uh, but we, between 2000 and uh 2010, we, we saw a substantial, we doubled basically. And then between 10 and 20, um, you know, we jumped up another uh, five or 6,000 people. So we're, we're not growing that quickly now, but I anticipate we're, we're probably anywhere from two to 300 people a year wow. uh, going up. So we'll, we'll debate uh, whether or not we, it makes sense to do a special census here closer to 2025. We did a, a special census in 2015. Uh, and really what that helped us do is generate some extra road use tax dollars uh, to go to, to our street projects uh, because we get a, we get um, reimbursed by the state on a per capita basis. So it may make sense to do something similar here in 25. Great. Well, we got some slides here today. I thought we'd maybe kind of go one by one and maybe talk about what's going on in North Liberty. So if you want to maybe go into each slide a little bit, that'd sure. be great. Just sure. talk about North Liberty. This is um, just an overview of uh, what I'm calling our civic campus and the, the, the facility that's that outlined in or the darker rooftop there is our new city hall. And that's under construction now. Uh, if you look... Um, and that's right downtown by Reds, right? It is, Everybody yeah. Kind of Reds is Reds. just kind of to the north there, mm -hmm. um, and then the police, the new police station is is uh, just to the south. Uh, so we're um, we're excited about this concept. We'll also have the police station, fire station, and city hall all in one complex. That's great. And for our audio listeners, we are showing a few photos that Ryan has generously brought with him. So if you want to take a picture or look at these, go ahead and check out the video version of the podcast at wattsgroupiowa.com slash podcast or by searching the Watts Happening Podcast on YouTube. So that's been it's pretty, pretty nice because City Hall used to be right on what, is it Cherry Street, right on the corner by Kosher's Grocery Store? Yeah. Then, that's, then that went to the police. And then, uh, uh, and then across the street was City Hall. Then it moved across the street, right? And then you moved out to Quail Creek Golf Course. That's right. And so now it'd be kind of nice to come home and have a campus. I think that's going to be really nice for everybody. Yeah, and that you know when we moved into the Quail Creek campus, um, which has been a great location for us, uh, you know, we said that was a three to five year uh, deal there, and now I think we're approaching twelve years there. Yeah. Uh, but things take time and, and we had to prioritize otherwise. And uh, so we are, we, you know, the, the, the point of developing this campus was really to maintain the integrity of our older part of the community and reinvest in that area. So we're pretty uh, happy with that, how that's turned out so far. And, and hopefully by June of 24, uh, we'll be uh, uh, in that new building. So you have city hall, you have administration, you have the police station, and the fire departments across the street, right? It's That's all correct. in that area. Yep. So if you haven't been by there, and then do we have plans on that? Austin, the next slides, do we have anything out there? there are, this actually, this is a Centennial Park project. Okay. I saw you. I had some other pictures in there. I don't know if you can. Of the city hall? Yeah. <clears throat> I thought I saw those. 
Yep, there, there you go. There we go. So, Here we go. Yeah, this is um, uh, another uh, angle of it. And one of the things we're really excited about with this project, and uh, it goes back to a, a process we did in 2020 where we had a visioning and kind of identity building process with our community. And one of the takeaways there was that our community was looking for, if you'd hold it right there. I'll there you talk go. About it. Our community was looking for uh, places, areas to congregate, to hang out, just uh, placemaking. Mm -hmm. And so with a lot of our projects, you're going to see that. Uh, this particular case, uh, we have a large plaza, what we're calling a pedestrian plaza. So we could host a little food truck vendors out there, maybe a little one-man band or some farmer's markets or just some general um, – public events. And what's unique about this is you can kind of see that area with all the glass, that corner, uh, that corner area. Yeah. Those all slide open. Really? Those, yeah. Those glass doors will slide open so we can have an indoor outdoor venue. Uh, if we're hosting again, a, a call it a, a food truck fair of some sorts with entertainment on that plaza. So we're, so is that a hall, what city halls to the left? What's the glass building? So that yeah. glass part is going to be a conference room. Conference. Uh, and okay. then uh, to the, what I'd say, the right of the screen then is the council chambers. Okay. Uh, yep, right there. And then all the offices are in the, the larger facility there. Both so up the and down. public can use a conference room? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah, so we're, we're really energized about this project and, and think it will uh, – not only help us from an efficiency standpoint, from an operational level, but uh, I think help uh, enhance North Liberty's identity. There, yeah, there's just some additional uh, photos of, of what that yard will look like. And if you hold it right there for a second, you can see that white line. Mm -hmm. That is uh, just to show that someday when North Liberty needs additional space, there's room to grow. Now, that'll be long after you and I are gone, I'm sure, uh, but it's there if needed. Nice green space in between now. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah. Yep, and then just another shot there, but we're, we're, um, we're just tickled with how the design has turned out and, and hopeful that uh, the final product will uh, be just as good. And when's the date on that to be done? Uh, we are planning to move in June of 24. June of 24, okay. And then here's an incredible project, uh, Centennial Park, which is a fabulous park. If you haven't been up and seen that uh, lately, I mean, what a great, uh, huge space, uh, great play areas for the kids. And then I see you got some good things happening. So do you want to tell us about Centennial? Sure. We're uh, equally excited about this project. And we, we bought 40 acres for Centennial Park, I think it was 2008. And believe it or not, we paid... Eighteen thousand dollars an acre at the time. That's the old days. Huh? That hasn't happened for a while. <laughs> well, I just remember Gary thinking, "Wow, are we really going to pay this much mm -hmm. for farm? You know, for park ground?" Yeah. Uh, boy, we'd take that in a heartbeat today. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so, after we bought that, we put together a master plan um, and knew that this would be our future home for our blues, big blues and barbecue right. event, uh, but also other programming. And so, what you're seeing develop out there now. Uh, is Centennial Center along with an outdoor stage. We're going to have an open-air pavilion that will house a, a skating rink, among other things, uh, all throughout the year. Uh, we're going to have probably the largest splash pad in the area to take a little pressure off that pool we were just talking about. Uh, and so it is. Good. we think this is going to be a regional attraction. Uh, and we're excited about uh, what we can what we can bring into this project. It's about sixteen million dollars, wow. so it's it's got a price tag on it. Um, we are in the process of applying for grant funds. We've got an application into the state's destination Iowa program for about three and a half million. Um, there are various other foundations and and um, programs out there that we'll be applying for. We're hoping to raise. Uh, about three and a half million dollars in fundraising and grants. Um, another, uh, and that would also include naming rights for uh, the various um, facilities or features out in that area. So, and then we'll um, uh, we have some uh, 
a revenue stream known as a franchise fee, a utility franchise fee that we collect that will be going to this project. So uh, looking at different ways to finance it, but we're hoping to hear from the state uh, this month, actually, uh, at which point then we'll be starting a larger uh, public campaign on uh, fundraising. Are you going to raise all the money before you start, or how do you look at that? Uh, we would, uh, yes, ideally raise it through direct gift or pledges. Okay. So here, here's um, uh, a neat picture of the stage itself and, uh, of course, showing it to you at night. But we've brought in a lot of great talent um, for Blues and Barbecue. Yeah. In fact, um, last year's band, um, Warren Treaty, I don't know if you've heard of them before, uh, but since they've been in North Liberty, they uh, have really um, imp have made an impact in Nashville. They were just on the Country Music Awards a couple <laughs> months ago. Uh, a talented uh, husband and wife duo, and uh, they that's the type of talent um, that we're bringing in for that event. Uh, that's a big event. You know, we have about 20,000 people in the park that weekend. That's not going to happen every weekend. Uh, we anticipate a couple ticketed events a year like that, uh, and then much smaller, more neighborhood-friendly type events uh, throughout the year. So the Blues Barbecue, I, I know that's grown significantly over the years. When did that start? 10, 15 years ago? Yeah, that was just, I think I think that started a year before I got here. So right. they're pushing 16 years now, I think. And it's grown into 20,000 over the couple days? Yeah. Yeah, when they first started, we wow. uh, actually the first year we probably had a couple thousand people there, and they were pretty jazzed about that at that point. And then the folks who run this, uh, you got to give a lot of credit to to Nick Burgess and and Dave Moore, uh, and of course, knowing those two, they would uh, rightfully so talk about their committee members. But just some good people behind that, and um, has grown into a, a heck of an event. It's amazing. If you haven't been there, you need to go. Yeah. That's late July, isn't it? Mid July. Mid -July. It's usually the uh, second Saturday in July. Up July. Okay, great. Here again, um, this is just part of that project. Uh, the pavilion. Um, this is the pavilion where I talked about. We'll have an ice skating rink underneath that. Right now, we have an ice skating rink on our tennis courts or pickleball courts mm -hmm. during the winter. Uh, having it covered will make it much uh, smoother for skating and other types of activities. But then again, here again, we think we can have all kinds of events underneath this thing. Uh, we anticipate uh, potentially this and the event center being used together for maybe an outdoor uh, wedding or you know something of that nature. Yeah. So we, we think there'll be a lot of uh, activity here. I saw something that just happened in North Liberty as we're talking about this. It's fire and ice. If you want to comment on that, it's looked like a fun event in the winter here. Yeah, Fire and Ice is part of our Beat the Bitter event, and we, we came up with this uh, oh, a few years ago now. There's a, there's a, a, a number of things that happened uh, that last weekend in, in January or early February uh, to Beat the Bitter. You know, obviously, Iowa is uh, – we, we can let the weather dictate our moods, and so we wanted to have an event to, to kind of get people together, and so – uh, we have a snuggy bar crawl for the adults, but then um, we have f uh, fireworks uh, and a lot of activities for kids. And, uh, you know, we have our our population is extremely young. We have a lot of toddlers running around. Uh, so it's it's a nice family event, but then a couple uh, or at least one event, the, the snuggy bar crawl is strictly for specifically Great. for adults. So. Well, something fun to do in the winter. So. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So it looked like a good time. And this is the splash pad I was talking about earlier. One of the challenges we do have with our pool is that uh, it can get overcrowded pretty quickly. Right. And, uh, you know, a lot of times we'll, we have to actually, for larger daycares or groups, they have to make appointments. And we just can't allow them to come at will because uh, it's just so packed in there. And so we have one smaller splash pad. Uh, in Penn Meadows Park, this is going to be a much larger feature, and we think it'll help take the pressure off of that pool, especially uh, for toddlers and the younger kids. And the other um, piece that is a, a driving factor for us here is staffing. Uh, a splash pad doesn't require lifeguards. And if you've read in the uh, news lately, 
uh, cities especially are having trouble finding summer help, lifeguards, recre recreation center uh, employees. It's just been a challenge. And mm -hmm. so uh, this is another thought process as we look to construct something like this. It's oh, nice. What else do so, we yeah. have here? So, uh, so this yeah. is a okay. yeah, this is a program we're pretty excited about, and actually, it's a program that we just received international recognition for. The International mm -hmm. City Managers Association awarded us uh, uh, a recognition for this program, and uh, it's called um, it's it's a good neighborhood program. Uh, and, and this particular piece is uh, a neighborhood ambassadors. And so what we've done is we've recruited ambassadors. We've developed, I think, 30 plus neighborhoods or tried to, I shouldn't say developed. We've um, outlined 35-ish uh, neighborhoods in the community and then have recruited ambassadors, uh, someone where if we need to get some information out, maybe it's a, a, a water main break in their neighborhood or a a dog running at large or whatever it might be, we can reach out to that specific ambassador and they can help us get the word out. Uh, we've had uh, a number of success stories already with this, just in terms of uh, those ambassadors learning uh, about different operations in the city, understanding you know, how the water is produced, how the wastewater gets clean, uh, you know, what, uh, what, what, the responsibilities are of the police department and uh, why it's important to keep your car off the road uh, when we're plowing streets, you know, those types of things. And the intent here is really just to get information out, another way to disseminate information to the public. We often hear uh, if something, you know, when something's going on, especially if it might be controversial or a change, uh, well, we didn't know about that. And uh, I certainly understand that. And, you know, we, we do our best to get things out on social media. We have email blasts. Uh, we have text blasts, all that stuff. Uh, this is just another tool for us to use to communicate with the public. So the ambassadors, do they meet? Do they have meetings inside their neighborhoods too? They So the, the ambassadors meet as a group every quarter. Uh, and then it's, it's up to them on how often they want to meet with their neighborhood or develop a web page, perhaps for the neighborhood, or use Nextdoor, uh, just encouraging them uh, to do those types of things. We even have small grants set up if they want to do a, a, a neighborhood party. We would help uh, with a grant to help fund uh, you know, inflatables or something of that nature to bring the group together. I think that's a great idea. I don't know who came up with it, but it's a great idea. We have a, a communications team that really is second to none. They're fantastic, and um, th this was this was their baby. It's nice. And then uh, I see you bringing up our our city slate events, and so you we just talked about the beat beat the bitter, and mm -hmm. uh, that's a piece of our city slate events. I think this is what's unique about North Liberty is. Uh, our team has has created about 40 different uh, events a year, uh, mostly family-oriented. Uh, and we go out and get sponsorships for these events, uh, whether that be, you know, the two big ones are Beat the Bitter and Blues and Barbecue, but we do things around the holidays. We do things around Halloween. Uh, we'll do a, a fishing event uh, in the spring. And just, again, just to just something to, to bring the community together to so folks don't have to leave North Liberty for entertainment or things right. to do. They can take their kids down to to um, uh, Liberty Center and, and, you know, throw a pole in the water or we have a little um, uh, uh, reading structures down there that were, uh, were funded through a, a partnership. And so just fun things like that. Yeah. <clears throat> keeps people around, keeps people be integrated in the community. And, well, and like you said, you don't have to leave town to have fun. And it, I, I think it goes back to quality of life. And, you know, one of the things that I've talked to our city council about, and, and in fact, I just heard Debbie Durham speak to this topic last week is Debbie Durham, the economic development right. director for the state is that, you know, you know, back in the day, uh, 
economic development was kind of like big game hunting and you went out and looked for that big company to bring in all the jobs and that's changed quite a bit now it is place making and quality of life people are going to choose where they want to live uh, and then look for a job and i think now that remote work is is so uh, popular that's even more so the case and so investing in quality of life projects and activities like our city slate our projects like Centennial Park or what's going to draw people uh, to this area. And, you know, I think Coralville has done a great job with the arena. And, right. uh, you know, that is our family's been down there uh, a few times, uh, a number of times. By the way, that's where the Liberty team won that state championship. <laughs> I was talking about earlier. Not to bring uh, that up again. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you know, but those types of, of, uh, facilities and programs are, are what's going to make our uh, community stronger. And I think uh, between Iowa City, Coralville, North Liberty, and Tiffin, I think we're all doing a pretty good job of trying to invest. Into Speaking of the arena, last week I was trying to get down here across the interstate, and it was packed, and it was everybody was coming in off the interstate to girls wrestling. And what a phenomenal weekend. It was packed, I think, for two or three days straight. People are all over the coming in on first avenue there yeah i'll tell you what <laughs> josh schomberger does a fantastic job recruiting those types of right. events and I mean, we're fortunate to have a guy like that right. around and what a great facility absolutely so what other things do we have coming up in north liberty here well uh i don't know that we have any more images to share but uh yeah. you know we talked a little yeah. bit about um earlier you and i off air talked a little bit about 965 or what we right. call ranch away and how and uh, we just finished up phase five of that project. And uh, when I first, again, back in 2007, when I got here, the city council was just finalizing a joint plan with the city of Coralville for a master plan uh, for, for, it was a 965 master plan at that time. Now, of course, it's Ranshaw Way and Coral Ridge Avenue. Uh, I'm happy to say that there's just one section left after 15 years. Uh, and that plan will be complete. And that one section is from uh, Golf View, or not Golf View, um, Quail Creek, uh, where the city hall entrance is now, mm -hmm. down to Penn Street. Really? So, or, I beg your pardon, not Penn Street. You mean Forever Green Road. Forever Green, yeah. yeah. That's the last section that's in. This new section, uh, I think, turned out great. We put in a pedestrian tunnel. Uh, I know you're a a bicyclist uh if you get an opportunity you should check that out it's especially in the evening it's it's lit up i mean it's pretty cool uh, and we'll do the same we're going to put another underpass in closer to forever green road uh as well you know one thing I, as we're talking about north liberty and, and, pro, and all the things that are exciting about it talk a little bit about what a tremendous councils you've served with and uh i don't know if the listenership knows how hard it is or how much work and I don't know if I'd use the word hard, but how I'm sure they enjoy doing it. But there's a lot more than just showing up to a city council meeting, you know, a couple times a month. There's, uh, it's it's almost like a full time job. What they have to study, what they have to learn, what they have you know, listening to the public. Uh, and then when I think back over the years in North Liberty, you've had a lot of really really good mayors and great counselors. So I don't know if you'd like to highlight that, but I don't I don't think the public usually appreciate all that goes in to be a city councilor or mayor and, and, and the type of work that they have to uh, go through to be able to make a, a strong city work like North Liberty has. Yeah, that's a great point. We've had, um, I've been fortunate to work with a, a group of mayors and city councilors that um, have always been respectful, uh, have always gotten along. They may not have always agreed on things, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, they could set that aside right. to, to accomplish the, you know, the goals. Uh, of course, uh, you, you know, you knew Mayor Psalm very well. Uh, mayor Tom Psalm uh, was the mayor that uh, uh, was here and part of the hiring process that hired me and, and he passed away suddenly in 2014 uh, uh, from a heart attack. And so that was, that was pretty devastating, not only f from a community leadership standpoint from from me personally he was just a, a good right. good friend and, and confidant and uh uh so he he's he's missed to this day uh that said we've had um 
some, some good mayors uh, and continue to have great mayors. Mayor Chris Hoffman is there now. Uh, he's been, he's Mayor Chris Hoffman and I actually, our first council meetings in North Liberty were the same day. He started as a city councilor. The same meeting I started as the, the city administrator. So we have some history together. And then uh, Mayor Terry Donahue, who um, uh, decided not to run for re-election this past year, uh, I don't know that folks understood how much experience he had in, in local government. He was a past president of the League of Cities, um, uh, spent a number of years in Creston as their mayor and counselor, and just and was on our P and Z before he was mayor. And so to have that type of experience uh, and knowledge uh, has really been helpful and helps uh, um, bring other counselors who might be new to the process or new to local government. Uh, Help, helps bring them along. So we've just been so fortunate with the folks we've been able to work with. Well, not only the council and mayors, but your staff, engineering, building department, all the folks planning. Uh, you know, when I think of North Liberty, they're professional. Uh, they get back to you. Uh, they're, uh, they do a great job for the city. Well, I appreciate and that comment. We, um, I, you know, we've, um, we, I think we have assembled a fantastic team and, uh, I tell them often I, you know, I jump out in front of a bus for them because I just, I feel that strongly about this group. They are just good people, uh, uh, you know, uh, with, uh, who are public servants. They've been public servants most of their lives. And, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it can be, it can be tough leading a police department or a fire department or, uh, making sure the plows are out, uh, right. at two in the morning, <laughs> or making sure the water's working and the wastewater's pumping and, and so uh, we just, we have a, a, a classy group of folks. Yeah, I would agree. That's the best staff and the best uh, that, that I've seen over the history. It's, you've got a great, you've assembled a great group. Oh, thank you. Let's talk a little bit. One of the things just popped in my head is Forever Green Road. When that, uh, I think the state started looking at that as a uh, overpass, what, uh, five, 10 years ago. And now it's a reality and just how much commerce. And then Forever Green comes in and heads, uh, East and all the University of Iowa on the corner there uh, with their new facility uh, hospital and then the development on 965 going south of Hills Bank of how what, how much commerce and what's going on forever green just is amazing to me. Uh, there's a new quick star going on the corner of that interchange and just a, just so many really cool things. Steinler Clinic coming in too. I mean, I'm probably going a little too fast, but if you want to comment on that area, the growth and what's happening. Yeah, we we're um, we're pretty excited to to see that de uh, develop and and mold into what we think is going to be a great area. Uh, the city invested oh, about uh, five million dollars in water and sewer out in that area so that it could be served. That's why you're seeing the Quick Star come in now, uh, and uh, you know that interchange. Uh, you know, while it not only uh, generates additional economic economic activity it uh, takes a ton of pressure off penn street right. and that was a real problem up there uh now interestingly the dot is going to be reconstructing that penn street bridge in 2025 so uh, we'll probably have to put some pressure back on that forever green road interchange until that project gets complete but we're a couple years away uh, so yeah with the steinler development uh the ui uihc development you know i jokingly tell people we're going to be the orthopedic capita of the world here with those two developments uh, so if you need a, a hip or a knee or an elbow you just come to north liberty come we'll, to north we'll liberty. hook you up yeah <laughs> uh, the other thing that i'd mention on forever green just going a little further east uh the city of coralville and north liberty partnered on a, a grant application uh through the miller meeks office and we're recently awarded two and a half million dollars to extend Forever Green from that roundabout in front of North Central Junior High mm -hmm. to Dubuque Street. Oh, really? That'd be a nice yeah, or to, I should say to North Liberty Road because okay. the development out there will take it to Dubuque Street. But that will be a, a big uh, improvement to the transportation system in, in the North Corridor. Uh, so Kelly and I will be working uh, uh, with engineers to get that project designed. And, and we don't have a timeline for it just yet. Uh, in fact, we just found out a couple weeks ago that uh, that money has been awarded. So pretty excited. Two and a half million dollars. It's an, it's a $10 million project. So we're still going to be looking for other, uh, 
potential grant fundings uh, through the state or, or federal government to help that project. It's a start. Yeah. Yes. And I notice all the businesses on 965 going south of the Hills Bank. All, lots of really neat things happen in that area. Yeah, and that right. you know a lot of that's in Coralville, uh, other than the university, of course. But right. you know, we um, I think. I think Kelly would agree with this that what you know what's good for Coralville is good for North right. Liberty and vice versa. And so, uh, you've seen you've you may have heard or you know Coralville North Liberty work on numerous projects together jointly because it's I mean it's while there's a dividing line there, uh, imaginary dividing line, most people don't know it. In fact, you'll appreciate this. I was I was at a family event. I won't name any names because I I don't want to embarrass anyone. Not that they're from around here, but I was at a family event a few months ago and. My aunt has some kids that live in North Liberty, and she was telling me how much she enjoys going to the North Liberty Hy-Vee. And I said, well, technically, it's, it's not a North, North Liberty. North Liberty doesn't have a Hy-Vee. And she started arguing with me. She said, yes, they do. I've been to it. I know there's a Hy-Vee in North Liberty. And I said, well, <laughs> it's on the line. Said, I don't want to argue with you, but yeah. it's not in North Liberty. Yeah. And uh, my wife had to jump in and, <clears throat> and uh, you know, calm things down a little bit. But yeah. uh, I thought it was kind of funny. My point is, is you know, no, not you know, people don't care where the line right. is. They want right. they want their services. They want you know things to do. And and so I think I think especially our communities here in the in the South Corridor understand that and work well together. Right. Would you have anything else you'd like to talk about? That comes to mind for about North Liberty, the growth, the success, anything yeah. that's coming up? Yeah. You know. Um, they're just it we just we have a lot going on right now and uh and i that's in large part to folks like you who are willing to invest in our our communities and so i i think that can't be forgotten you know uh the developers and um, the real estate experts who are willing to uh invest uh in north liberty in the corridor and that's i mean when we talk about what makes us what makes this area so good well location's great uh, but quality local developers, I've just been so impressed with with who we have in our communities uh, who've lived there here most of their lives. Yourself, right. Brandon Pratt's went to right. high school here. Right. Um, Mike Hodge, you know, right. those guys, have, and I know I'm forgetting people, but it's just neat to see. Uh, right. And I think it takes all of us to, right. to, make, uh, to make our communities attractive. Well, if you haven't been in, driven through North Liberty lately, I'd highly suggest you take a look. There's tons of great projects going on. There's some really nice developments coming in. And uh, North Liberty is definitely a happening place. Uh, and just as I look back over 45 years, just uh, really nice, tremendous growth, but controlled growth. It's been well done. Uh, it's a pleasure doing business in North Liberty. And uh, we're just excited to have you here, Ryan. And uh, Appreciate you bringing some good thoughts and good vibes about North Liberty. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. This was yeah, fun. Great to see you. Thanks. Thanks.